So this, as you know, is the Dream Studio, and it hasn't really been picked out yet. It's going to have um, a full lighting gear, a full stage, um, a full stage setting. We'll be able to dim this down and you know make it feel like MTV Unplugged. Mm -hmm. I would say in the next couple of weeks we're going to really start to turn this up a bit and really bring this into into the property, which gives us a whole other dimension. And I don't think you know there's live streaming from here. Pretty much we're going to have it 24-7. Um, this obviously breaks down into a stage, a runway, or as you can see it now. So, so this is, um, so this is the, this is the nerve center that runs the house and the Whoa. property. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I can point out, you know, let me point out a few of these things so you understand, like, when you think about what goes behind giving people that seamless feel that they have complete control, this is, this is part of why that, why it works. Um, so we have, on the website, there are three ways to view, to view the site. The main one, I think, for us is Just Watch. Mm -hmm. Just Watch is essentially a 24-hour, um, 24-hour television show that's actually cut 24 hours a day by the people who sit here every man this, this room 24 hours So a day. kind of selecting what's the most interesting thing going on at any given time? They have access to all the cameras in the house and the thumbnails are refreshed for them um, every second. So at every second of the day we are pushing um, all the thumbnails into here so they can one, find the people in the house and two, kind of make a decision about what's the most important thing in the house to show. And then in this grid right here, if you see this red dot, mm -hmm. um, and that's essentially Amanda just waking up at 10.15. <laughs> um, whenever they move or point to a different you know, camera in the house, and there are about 60 cameras, once they move the red dot, it basically cuts to um, a different angle of the house. So is that motion tracking? that's doing that or is there manual control well, involved? finding, uh, there's a couple of, you asked a couple of questions there. Um, we're actually switching, we're actually telling a content distribution network, the CDN, mm -hmm. move everyone's computer to this new URL. So we are essentially, if we have 10,000 people on the site, everyone's computer at the same time is dropping a URL and picking up a new URL, um, which is... Uh, kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> And then you have, then we have this other piece of the system, which is, and pretty much 24-7, someone has to sit here and tell the website at all times where everyone is. Um, and they do that because if you go to, say, the house mode, or you click down here on one of these avatars, like if you want to find out where Alex is. I was just checking house, that out last night and wondering how that worked. If you just click there, the reason it can take you exactly to where he is is because all day long they're watching this screen to see where everyone is and they're putting people in those respective rooms. So that if you're looking in a house view, you can see above it who's in that room. If you're in an all cameras view, we turn on the rooms where people are and, and that is all triggered by this one piece of technology here. And frankly, we would have liked to have automated it, we tried to automate it, but unless it's 100% accurate, um, it'll give bad user experience. Right. So it actually does require a full-time person. And then what we do is we use, we're recording every camera 24-7 to disc. And this is, if there's someone in a room, we keep, the, we keep the files. If there's no one in a room, we get rid of them. So it's a big piece of our post-production work also. So how much storage is that taking up every day? Um, I'm thinking, the total is maybe 40 terabytes. Per day? I think a day is probably a terabyte. Okay. Yeah. One to two terabytes a day. Yeah. That's, that's a lot still. Yeah. It is a lot. And I can, I'll take you through the post-production system, but that's also pretty revolutionary. I mean, there's no tapes, there's no, there's no encoders, there's no, there's nothing. It's just, it's completely digital. The entire flow of post-production which can be a whole other conversation, the topic that we talk about is 100% the movement of data, the deletion of data, the editing of data, everything is 100% digital. So that's, I think that's fairly unique too. Um, 
And then um, we have uh, a lot of tools, obviously, to track the health of the system. Uh, we have you know dashboards that show us pretty much you know when that dashboard up there is all red, we have a massive problem. That means no one's seeing video through any of the cameras in the in the house. We probably have about a hundred monitoring points in the system. Mm -hmm. Things like what's the temperature in the data center up in the garage, you know, and if that goes up by five, you know, a couple of degrees and sets off an alarm and someone's in there to make sure that that's back on. I mean, things that you traditionally have in, you know, a big site that you run. Right. Um, but because this is 24-7 live and we haven't had a major interruption, it's because we have, you know, every system, it's like a plane, mm -hmm. every system has a backup. So even... I'll give you one example. There's um, the internet pipe to this house is the largest internet pipe to the residents in the country. Is this bigger than a T1 line or? Uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> um, it's a DS3, and it's uh, it's like I think three T1s wrapped together. Wow. Um, and yeah. and it um, we had to dig a trench two miles <laughs> from Mulholland down to the house. <laughs> We had to convince a company to actually put it in. And then, if that one line went down, we were basically done. So if someone if someone put a backhoe through that line, yeah. uh, because they were putting in a, a pool or something, yeah. <clears throat> we would lose connectivity for probably a week. I mean, the site would essentially be down. So we have actually a wireless backup. And we've got two hops out of a deep canyon all the way down to El Segundo. Mm -hmm. Um, with wireless backup, and you know, I think it's I think it's fired up four times since we've been live mm -hmm. um, to keep the site. You know, basically it fires up in less than a second, so it's an immediate failover. We have redundancy. Lots of redundancy built into this. So how often do things go wrong? Is does it need kind of constant maintenance or? It does. I mean, we have some very good tech partners, and at some point I have to give some props to the guys who help design this. Thing. I've orchestrated it, but there's quite a few people that have been a part of delivering this thing. Um, and it requires, we have 24-7 maintenance monitoring of, like I said, about 100 data points. And mm -hmm. there's emails fire off, there's, you know, procedures to call into the control room, there's, like, protocol as to, like, who to call first, these guys know what to do, we run them through. What happens if you see choppy video, what could that be? Mm -hmm. What happens if the camera goes down, how do you restart it? I mean, We've configured the system so that, um, and if I take the house, you can see that if one server goes down, we lose four cameras. And they're not four cameras in the same room. Mm -hmm. So a lot has been put into the robustness that when you're just sitting back watching, you know, it just feels effortless, mm -hmm. but, you know, effortless is never effortless. <laughs> <laughs> it looks effortless. So there you go. It looks effortless. So we have a couple of other things that I think are fairly unique to the property. Um, one of them is that we have a piece of technology between, um, and obviously in the morning our traffic is very low, but we can tell basically across the globe who's watching at mm -hmm. any point in time. And the reason we can do that is we funnel every user through this piece of technology that decides we have three CDNs in place, mm -hmm. and it's making a decision on the fly based on your connectivity response time in, say, Atlanta, Georgia. Is Akamai better right now? Is High Winds better right now? Or is Big Gravity better right now? Who's got the best connectivity in that town? And if it seamlessly tries, switches between? Well, it's constantly sniffing and adjusting so that if High Winds is having connection problems, um, you'll get a connection with Akamai. And this, and it's, I would say it's one of the more, it's one of the, more robust things we put in place because it's not what that means just from I hope you don't mind if I go a little technical go for what it that means is we're pumping out um, for each stream that we put out um, there's two streams there's a, you know a thousand K stream and a 500 fi you know you know one megabit stream and a 500 K stream mm -hmm. and and we're doing that for user experience so that if you have a slow connection, obviously, you know, we sniff and we give you the, the, the lower band, you know, the lower density stream. Well, there's 60 cameras, so that's 120 streams that we're pushing out 
to one CDN, but we do it for three CDNs. So we're pushing out 300, about 360 streams 24-7 to three CDNs so that on the fly, you know, one of the, you know, we can make a decision what's the right stream to serve you in your town at this time during the day, depending on what happens in the CDN. Because it's, I don't think people know it, but all CDNs have problems. That's just a fact. Um, and I think for a level of quality, we were really intent on making sure that, you know, I think with bigger sites, sometimes if, if, it, if Atlanta's having a problem with Akamai, their users have a problem. Right. And that's just, that's just the way they go, because they can't afford to put this in the middle. But we felt from a user experience perspective, um, and uh, the product's called Conviva. So this is, um, this is how we run the website. And so if someone, like as an example, someone gets in the car, we actually place them in the car, we turn the car on. Actually, things like even the car, the Ford car, mm -hmm. that has, I'm just giving you like sound bites of some of the stuff that's in here. It's just the car itself has automatic turn on for streaming. So as soon as they turn the ignition on, the streaming fires up, it's mobile, and it's on. And, you know, we're also recording. You know, I'll talk about the post-production piece, but you know, it's recording to, to to disc, and it's also pumping out through mobile. And we have three mobile cards in there, so if at any point you're getting Sprint's a problem, you're picking up Verizon. Right. Verizon's a problem, we're picking up T-Mobile. Um, so you know, even down to just the integration for Ford, um, there's a lot of technologies just packed into the car um, to make that actually go. Do you follow them when they then get out of the car, or is that kind of, is there any thought of, you know, partnering with like a Quick or a Ustream to have them, you know, be constantly streaming on their mobile devices? Um, it's like a next tier. I think that that's like, mobile, as you can tell, we don't have, we have not spun up the mobile platform yet, mm -hmm. and we haven't spun up like a device platform yet. Mm -hmm. So I think a place where we're very interested in going next is, um, things like the iPad for live streaming. Um, because I think over over um, Wi-Fi, you know, we can do it. We can put yeah. a good experience in place there. And I think mobile's a little tricky. Um, to get the experience at the level of quality that we want, I think it has to be slightly different than what we're doing. I'm not sure that can be 100% the experience we've built for the internet. But, you know, we move slowly there because I think it's a big space and we just have to get it right. Maybe when 4G comes to LA exactly. this year, sometime. 4G is like one of I think, the critical things that will give us, I think, you know, the level of quality that we want. So I can explain to you how you can see Justin's on this product. Yep. <laughs> um, I can explain to you how um, how post production works because that's kind of there's a bunch to that as well. That'd be great. Um, and I didn't want to get too technical, you know, but it, but if you want more, I can give you more. Um, so let's go into the other room here. Okay.